Welcome to another edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. Today, we are pleased to be out here at the Silver King Mine with Jack San Felice, who's a noted historian and author on the area. And he's here with us. Jack, it's good to have you here. Tell us, how did you become associated with the Silver King Mine? At age 52, I, in law enforcement, enough was enough. And, you know, I worked, I, I spent 11 years working in the ghettos. So working shift work, where I would work in high crime areas. So I came out here and I didn't want to go back into law enforcement. I could have, but I decided that I always wanted to go west and so I, I came west. I was always enamored about stories about the cowboys and the, my heroes on television, of course, all were, were the, the Jack Webb and Dragnet and the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Gene Autry and Tex, um, the, even the silent cowboys, uh, Tex Ritter and Johnny Mac Brown and um, the cowboys and those guys, the sheriffs and whatnot of the old west, they were kind of like my heroes. The heroes have always been cowboys. Well, that's the way it was. I wanted to see the old west before the old west was gone. And from what I was reading, the old west was going fast. The development of the Old West was going fast. So I did have my sister living out here at uh, Cave Creek running a, I was supposed to have a job out here working in PR. I don't know why they might have thought I might have been a good talker or something. I had been the press officer for our department, a large department for one year. I didn't like it, but man, I thought that would be boring. I wanted to do stuff more exciting. And I had read about this thing called the Lost Soldier story and the Dutchman mind. The Dutchman story. But the Lost story of the Soldier story enamored me because uh, I had been around the homicide. I was in charge of, uh, for three years, in charge of robbery squad. And we worked hand in glove with homicide unit. And so uh, um, I saw that facet of law enforcement and I worked in that facet. And I said, I looked at the Lost Soldier story being a murder story that needed to be solved. Obviously, they were killed, they were murdered in the superstitions. It's an old murder story. Maybe I could go back and work on it, work it up, and do something to perhaps solve it or give a plausible story and write a book about it. Couldn't even, couldn't even find the names of the soldiers. To this day, 2,000 pages on the soldiers, I don't know their names. I have stories that says that the soldiers were named X and so. Can't find that name in Fort McDowell, anywhere in the record, anywhere of the Army posts in Arizona of, of the, that names of people that were here. So I said, well, the tale starts at the old mine called Silver King. Why don't I go up and start there? And I'm still reading every night about the Dutchmen and the soldiers and doing research. And I'm going to libraries around here and whatnot. And play. I couldn't find anything, hardly anything. Nothing in the libraries. It was just all gobbledygook stories, some stories about guys that told basically fairy tales. And they took the same story and told it and changed a few words around and never really made sense out of it because the Lost Dutchman couldn't have been on Bluff Spring or Blacktop or any of those other mountains if everybody was darn sure it was on Blacktop, darn sure it was on Bluff Spring, darn sure it was on the Weaver's Needle, darn sure it was on here. It was all these stories, wait a minute, 100 different stories of where they knew exactly where it was. No, nobody, obviously nobody really knows because they didn't find gold. The thing of it is, didn't find a goal. I said, well, maybe the soldier story would be easier. So first I got to find Silver King. I'm, I'm by myself in my Ford Explorer, and I'm running around the mountains, but I've always got a gun. So, and I still got one. I always got a gun everywhere. So I go and I'm, and I find a old, this old road and uh, it comes up here. And someone said it's north of Superior on the dirt road. So. You no, know, there's about 18 dirt roads coming off of Superior going different places as you go through the desert. And, and so I finally found my way up here and I go through the gate and it's abandoned. There's nothing here. There's nothing here. The year's 1993, okay? There's nothing here. There's a lot of 
piles of rocks is all I see. And I see some remnants of cabins and whatnot. Nobody, and the mole mine's full of water. And I go over to where that, and I drop, well, drop rocks down to hear them plunk. I thought, well, it makes a nice sound. I would plunk the rocks down there. One day in 1996, I've been looking and searching for the Dutchman and, and stories. I'm doing research and I had met Greg Davis and I'm studying at his house all summer, making Xerox copies of everything and looking for the lost soldier story. And so I start finding more on the Silver King than I put on the lost soldier. So Jack, how did you acquire the original photos? So I was putting this binder and I got this binder and Greg says, well, I know this lady over here and maybe she knows something. That lady told me about another lady. This lady had original photos of the Silver King mine. She had a letter from her grandfather and he was telling somebody about the soldier story. And so he wrote in there and but it was the only letter that she had. She wouldn't let me take it to make a copy. She said, Jack, I, and she had given me photos, original photos, copies of, and some original photos of the Silver King. So I have a whole folder of photos that given to her. her name was uh, Velma Bowen Tucker. And I dedicate in the front to her, there's four people I dedicate that Silver King book to, Velma Tucker, my sister Rose, who passed away, my dad, who passed away, and Joe, who passed away. So everybody is in there. I could write about them because then they couldn't complain about what I wrote about them. They were gone. I figured I'm safe here. So anyhow, it's 1996, and I said, uh, you know, um, I'm going to take a ride back to Silver King after, and I had them photos and see what I compare these photos where the town was and everything. Thought it'd be great. I come up here and I go, I pull up to where the hole in the ground was, and I looked over and I saw lights down below and there's no water. And there's a set of ladders going straight down. Who is in this mine? What's this? What's up with this? Being an old policeman, I walked the alleys of DC by myself with just a gun and a flashlight. If I can do that, I, and I'm claustrophobic though, I said, I can go down in there and find these, who these people are. It don't, if I can hear them, see the light, it can't be far. They were 256 feet underground. Okay, they were in the third level. <laughs> there was the 110, the 150, <laughs> the, yeah, the 110, the 150, the 256, and the 300, the 308. So I keep going down forever, and you go down 16 feet on a wooden ladder, which is wet, because it's a wet mine. And I go through a little c c hole, and, and, and at the first little hole, I had to leave my camera because I couldn't go through it with the camera in my backpack. I left it there. And so all I kept was my little pen light flashlight. And I started, I kept going down 16 feet, flip flop, go down, 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 down. After about X amount of time, 15 minutes, I guess, I'm down at the bottom. But I can't, I don't know where they are. I can see the light, but I can't see them. I hear the noise, they're drilling. And it's so, dusty in there. They can't see me, I kind of they look like ghost figures. I'm hollering at them. I want to let them know I'm there. They can't hear me because of the drill. It, the drill's like a jackhammer. It's on a tripod um, drill, and it goes eight feet long is the drill bit, okay? And they can even take it to 16 feet, actually. But they're, they're using eight foot drills. And what a racket and what a bond of dust they're making. They can't hear me. Finally, I go over and I step over and I touch one on the shoulder and the guy jumps about two feet in the air. See, they had been experiencing ghost voices at night oh, up here. Okay. <laughs> They've been hearing voices coming out of the shaft, voices coming out of the outhouse down below, voices from the old cemetery, the Silver King Cemetery. So they were all a little spooky anyhow. And when I did that, and they looking at me through the dust. I must have looked like a ghost to them. I probably had dust all over me. And so when they finally figure out I was a man and not a uh, Tommy knocker, 
He started talking to me. I found out that they were the deans and they were trying to reopen this and yada, yada, yada. One thing led to another. And I said, I want to go up and bring my camera back down and start taking some photographs. And when the dust settles, they said, we're almost done. And we're going to blast. And after that, we come back down. But we can take a photo before we blast because then it'll get really dusty. So they quit things. I went up to the first level, 16 feet below ground, got my camera, figured a way how to put it on my body, and I climbed back down. Climbed back down. And they thought it was amazing. One guy would just go up and down this thing by himself and, down, and face these guys unknown, unknown group of people. And so I started taking photos of them back there, and I have some of those photos today. And I said, and we got to be friends. I told them, I will do your photos of the, uh, every, every level of the mine that you uncover in exchange for allowing me to pick up pieces of ore. You tell me what, what ore is good and I get copies of the photos and whatnot, and I can do your stories, write short stories. And so that's how I got started on it. I got to meet the deans, got to be friends, and I got to be working with them. And uh, 21 years, 22 years later, I'm still here trying to get the mine back open. Put together 7,000 pages of documentation on the legal documents for the mine. You are one lucky son of a gun that you didn't end up like those two soldiers when you went down there into the Silver King and disturbed the Dean family. <laughs> you would have ended up just like them. One of the mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.